This is not an expert presentation. This is uh, the data privacy equivalent of a third grader doing a book report. <laughs> <clears throat> so audience participation. How many other people, other than you, obviously, has the same combination of zip code, birth date, including year, and sex? Very few. Very, show of hands, five? Five or more? Four? Three, two, one, or zero, or negative one. <laughs> so for 87% of the population, the answer is zero. That's one study. There's some other studies that have it down in more in the low 60s. But that, the point of this is to show that very few data points can uniquely identify you. The second, <laughs> <laughs> what I've also learned, and this, I, again, this is a book report of an article that I, or a long paper I wrote. Uh, the idea, that, and the theme of the paper was that anonymization do, isn't sufficient anymore, and we need to change basically our privacy laws to reflect that. So uh, an open data person, a well-intentioned researcher, what they generally do is they have a data set. It may include sensitive information. What they do appropriately is remove the personally identifiable information, the PII you've probably heard of. That includes name, social security number, address, et cetera, things like that. And then they publish the data, and they think they're in good shape. Here's what then can happen. So that green database with the personal information sliced off of it now can be combined with other databases that live out there. So that, that database doesn't live in a vacuum or in isolation. It can be combined with other data. And so you can take that data where people do know who you are, where you have personally identifiable information. You have common fields, you can combine those two, and you can get a lot more information. And so, for example, I had a friend uh, show me last week the voter file. So he's a political guy, and he showed me the, my data uh, in the voter file in the uh, NGP van, it's called. And it's, it's a little scary uh, what they know or what they think they know. And this process can continue. So it's not just that one database. They can augment that with another database and another and another through a process called accretion and build up a lot of information. So now I have a bigger, better, uh, more dangerous database. So the so what here is that simply removing personally identifiable information often isn't enough. So when Tom talked about generalizing to a census tract or 15 minute windows, et cetera, that's a slightly different technique, generalization, uh, which is also necessary but the, the key point here is it's never perfect because you can take one database, get a little bit of information, get another, add another database, get a little bit more information, and build that up. And what's the public policy implication for this is that data privacy laws generally focus on removing personally identifiable information and then they give you what's called safe har harbor, basically saying if you follow these rules, then you can't be sued. So the recommendation from this paper is there's a lot more that needs to be done with privacy laws, has to go well beyond PII and factor in other considerations. Thanks. <laughs>